Let's go, Arkansas fans. You gave me so much love on my first spring practice breakdown. Yes, sir. Guess what? I got another one for you. And if you want to acclimate yourself to the natural state, get you a pair of hokas. Ha, ha, ha. You, you got to love it. Malachi Singleton working in today. We're going to obviously break down this backup quarterback battle. Um. So far at Arkansas practice, you have seen mostly Taylor Green get the first team reps, and that's where we're going to start today. You're running a little reverse here to Isaiah Satania, a huge year coming up for him. Year three, this should be the breakout year, and guess what? The Arkansas defense has this sniffed out, um, and it looks like over here on this far side, we do have um, a miss block somewhere. Either way, that's a good job right there. That is number 10 defensively, Xavier Sori, uh, going in there and making the play. So, you know, as far as the scrimmage portions, the first thing, obviously, I, I don't have the best angle to obviously break down these clips the way that I love to. But at the same time, it's something, right? And it is just practice. And also, this is not only practice. This is one of the earlier practices, okay? Um this was a play that we broke down extensively in our last breakdown, right? Um, and you should watch the last breakdown because this play went for a lot of yards. You get a little fake split zone action going across, and this is actually just a quick tight end flat route. And this right here needs to get checked out of because the key block on this play for it to work is Isaiah Satania all the way in here on Lorando Johnson. Look at where Isaiah Satania is on this hash. Look at where Lorando Johnson is. That is too tough of a block. If this DB is keying this hard right here, this play is just not ever really going to work. And there's really nothing Satania could do about that. And they have it sniffed out. I think Lorando knows the play. Um, and it's just you know, bust it up. This is going to be a discussion, right? We're, we're going to have uh, a little convo. This is a really good throw right here by Taylor Green, getting this football out quickly, throwing the hitch when he sees that this corner is way back off, right? You look at the great offenses throughout the SEC, and just even in the NFL, they do a good job when you see these corners play this far off of a really talented player like Luke Haas, you want to get that football out quickly, okay? Next thing, all right? that I really like about this from Taylor Green. Um, mechanically, he can get erratic. This is really tight, okay? Good, quick footwork, okay? Watch, it's very subtle. It gets cut off here. God, I wish it didn't get cut off. Then we could get a better C, but I would like to think that this was tight because, bang, look at that base, right? I mean, that is just really, really good stuff. A good tight ball driven out there to the receiver. Now, there's another side of this play, which is the protection. It wasn't good, okay? Both of these players, I butchered their names in the first video, and you people guys went crazy, okay? Patrick Kutas, it's not Custis or Kustis, or it's K-U-T-A-S, okay? Let's first take a look at him, all right? And he's going head up here versus Ball. Ball dominated him um, in the rep in our last practice, okay? This isn't even a great defensive line rep. He's firing off really, really high. Well, I, I kind of want to slow this down a little bit more, okay? He's firing off really high high and kind of out of control okay so as an offensive lineman you gotta like that right if he's firing off this high and it looks like he just kind of got caught in between pass rush moves right and now he's just pushing all right and once again it does get cut off here okay um but you'll see that uh, Patrick still gets driven backwards pretty badly. You see his feet stop, and watch. He'll trip over himself right here, okay? So even though it was a bad get-off, he gets beat here. This is Fernando Carmona, okay? The transfer coming in from San Jose State. A lot more active feet right here. Let's do a little bit of trivia. Can you name the most famous San Jose State alumni? And bang, they're is a hint for you. She's a famous singer. There you go. You should be able to get that. I will reveal the answer at the end, okay? This is not 
the best rep. It's not the worst rep, okay? Um, actually, I think that's pretty good, all things considered. It gets a little leany for me, but that's okay. This is a nasty route here on the backside by Andrew Armstrong. That's really good stuff. Look at Braxton right here grab it at air, okay? He was closer to Casper the Friendly Ghost uh, than he was Armstrong right there. That's what I like to see. That's a really good offensive rep across the way, and that's good. All right, we get back up here to 0.7x, uh, 0.75 speed. Okay, it's still tailing green at quarterback. Let's see what happens here. We got trips to the left side. Lots of trips early on uh, for the Bobby Petrino practice sessions here. Okay, and yeah, this is just really good offense. Now, this is what I like to see right here. You know, a, little, uh, a minute ago, you saw um, 16 right here. Uh, get get hammered, destroyed on a blocking assignment, and it wasn't really his fault, right? Uh, the, the the DB was all the way far to uh, the inside, and right here, this time, Satania just dominates this matchup right here from Lorena Johnson. That's really, really, really good stuff. I also like seeing uh, Satania just grow, right? He's, he's getting bigger, right? He's not really that big of a guy. He's a little bit of a diminutive guy. Also on this play, I want to show some love to Brad Spence, number 22. Year two guy, you know, with Thomas transferring back to be with Luke Fickle at Wisconsin. We actually had a comment here bring that up. Uh, that was a good play right there by Brad Spence to get on out there. Now, um, this is via hog beat. We get to the next quarterback and the backup quarterback battle that we'll spend some time talking about is, you know, Malachi Singleton. I, and, and, and actually I'll save this for just uh, here in just a minute. Um, this is just really, really good quarterbacking. Once again, if these corners are just going to play this far off, you just want to keep hitting comeback routes out into space. It's a good job right there by Tesla, cutting off that route, running the comeback, make them force uh, to make tackles. And, and look, you'll, you'll take five yards at a time. Why not? All right, so we get to this next rep. Oh, man, this is just good, good, good offense. First off, let's talk about this protection, okay? Uh, yesterday in the first practice, we had 76 going up against 97, dominated 97. Guess what he decides to do again today? That's that's putting this guy in a phone booth. That's what I'm talking about right here. That's really, really, really good tackle football right there. Let's get to the next rep right here, okay? Now... See what happens when you dominate your guy? 76 stalemates 97 so bad that the DT right here, 93, actually trips over the foot of the left tackle, and the left tackle doesn't budge at all. And then we get to Varkis Gums, right? Uh, Varkis Gums uh, is not a blocking tight end, right? Um, he, he, he was probably the worst blocking tight end I saw in the SEC last year. But the young man could catch. Right, Arkansas's got three really good receiving tight ends. Also, love this route concept. You know, we're you know you're seeing Arkansas just move quicker, and we get um, Gums going head up versus his backer. And something else I really like about Singleton, he's only six foot tall, um, but he's throwing over the intermediate middle. You'll see a lot of college quarterbacks struggle throwing to this portion of the field. It's an area of the field that Arkansas has struggled throwing the football. And because 93 is down, it just clears this pathway uh, a lot easier for Arkansas, uh, the, for the quarterback Singleton to step up and throw this football. And watch this, bang. Yes, it is slightly behind him, but this is really good stuff overall by Singleton. Okay, seeing the matchup, and, and it's just it's just nasty. Nasty offense right there from, from Arkansas. All right, here we go. Um, next throw. This is an absolute dot. Let's start with the protection again. 96, 97 going up against 76. This is Little Rock on Little Rock. Nasty. I mean, just absolute nastiness. Man, uh, 76, uh, I, I believe that is Harris. Okay, uh, Imarion Harris, good stuff. That's sophomore v. sophomore. Um, this time, we do... Uh, man, I, I wish this guard would have, 
and and this is where some communication needs to you know step in right here. If I am getting this matchup and I'm dominating this matchup, I want this guard to sit a little heavier on the A gap, okay? And you'll see this guard peels off this A gap to go help 97. 97 the, the 76 doesn't need any help on 97. He's dominating them. And because of that, 93 is able to beat this center, okay? Nevertheless, this is an absolute seed right here from Matt. Kai Singleton, the pride of Georgia. Man, bang. Look at that bad boy. Okay. This is a difficult throw. Now, I want you to, uh, once again, this is at 0.7 at 5 speed. Look at how quickly everything moves in football, right? I mean, it, it's just amazing. This is such a beautiful game. Now, March 9th, South Dark Stars, college basketball. They're playing a team from St. Louis. I'll be doing play-by-play -play on YouTube. Go to the South Arc Community College YouTube page. We're trying to get that to 1,000 subscribers. This team has overachieved all year, and they're getting to play. If they win, they go to, like, the March Madness of D2 Juco. So uh, make sure you subscribe and all that good stuff. Discuss uh, Varkis Gums, right? This is part of the problem is he's just not a good blocker. Uh, this is actually my first time watching this right here. All right, so we're running this play uh, that you've seen Lucas run, you know, a couple times now. And this time you're throwing this to more of a blocking type of tight end from Copenhagen, Denmark, Andreas Posky. I, I'm not, I, I know I'm butchering that. So you guys in the comment section, do not destroy me for butchering his last name. Okay, that's good stuff. So we hit him on his upfield shoulder, and this is what you can't do in the spot if you're the blocker, okay? This is 12 personnel. Remember yesterday we were talking about Arkansas running more 12 personnel, two tight end sets. Part of the benefit of having an extra tight end is having him be a blocker. Now, you can make a case that this is a more of a variation of 11 personnel, and Gums is just basically playing wide receiver here, but still... Um, it's 12 personnel. You can't do this. You can't tug Jersey this bad where we're seeing the defender's full shoulder pad, okay? And then, you if you're locking in on a block like this, I understand there are some NFL All Pros that can get off this block and get to the next block. Just worry about your assignment because if you start worrying about something else, guess what? Um, I don't know why they did that. Uh, if you start worrying about another assignment, you're starting to tug, okay? And you're starting to worry about this guy, and you're clearly pulling this guy. We don't want a penalty on this play. Um, I'm looking at Joe. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Got to make sure you're awake, okay? We get to Jacoby Criswell, and I'm actually going to do something really spicy here. We're going to marry two angles together okay we're actually going to start off at the end of this play this ball was almost intercepted right here by number 28 so let's start with this angle and then i'll show you another angle here in just a moment okay this ball is being intended for bryce stevens there's a better angle of this play uh, and we'll get to it in just a second what i want to also show you is to the left side here that this is true fresh and defensive back Selman Bridges. He is absolutely burnt right here, okay? I like seeing freshmen get burnt early on in the process because it, it makes you work that much harder. It makes you not want this to happen again because, you know, in high school, you're used to just dominating everyone. Now we get to the better angle, okay? The first thing here is, and, and part of why I have to use the other angle is because the snap got cut off, okay? Um, th th this is just sloppy but he's a true freshman and not really worried about it he is the second highest rated true freshman on this team and they did give him a single digit number this is mclaughlin's number that's very prime real estate uh obviously he was trying to get a jam or something um and his feet stopped and he's he's just he's just burnt okay but you got to remember that this is a rollout play action to the right side so you're never really throwing this deep Post. It would have been nice to see it, though. Um, but still, now, we're going to get to the main portion of this route, okay? And this is why it's tough. You know, Jacoby Criswell is right now working with 
the threes, okay? And if you do not mind, before I share this next bit of information, please feel free to drop a Venmo or Cash App at Card of the Power. You can also drop a super thanks. It is in the bottom right corner of the screen. So Arkansas is actually bringing a second level blitz, and it makes it look like this deep over would be open. The issue here, and this is number 14, Bryce Stevens going up against number 14, R.J. Johnson is when you're running a deep over and you have a DB uh, in Johnson is really talented. You see, he reads this pretty quickly. The issue here is if you're running a, uh, a longer developing rollout to the right side, the slot receiver has to do a better job of selling a vertical route here um, to, to not give away that he's running an over. Because if he's running an over across the field, this DB can read it and close down on it. So the way you're supposed to do this is do something called a stair step technique, right? Where you're running like this and you sell vertical just for a second and then, you know, go over, right? But because he went over this quickly okay even right here you could stair step sell vertical to push 14 back on his heels but because you gave away that you're going directly over this allowed 14 to close down and make this play so the route here from stevens wasn't the best and that's why you get this 50 50 ball get deflected okay they're never calling that pass interference and it almost got intercepted the next thing here is i mean you could argue that throwing this comeback route is where this ball actually should have gone but still on the rollout to the right side that's probably your first progression um and the ball is actually thrown accurately it's just the route wasn't right, we get to here i believe it was 83 who uh, burn two a minute ago. So if you're burning him vertically, guess what? You come back and you run a comeback route. Um, who is number 83? Get this guy a single digit number. Darwin James. I've seen him make a few plays and um, that's what he does here. So you want to get this guy on his heels, sell vertical, and then just run these comebacks. This is something you've seen all three of the units do. Let's see. They're going to hope Charleston Collins can give them something uh, next year, so yes, all right, we do get it confirmed. It is number nine, Collins, all right? So, all right, these are your two best true freshmen. You give them both single-digit numbers. They're both the, the, the four stars, okay? Um, top 100 recruit, top 150 recruit. Let's see how it goes. All right. Okay. Um, they're true freshmen. Ha, 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 ha. So uh, I, I like that we finally get a handoff here to break down. Did Chris Will check into this? Okay. Shamar Easter uh, comes in here. Okay. There's another true freshman. And I don't know if he checked into it, if it was just a play call. If he checked into it, that's pretty impressive because you do have a light box. Okay. You only got six people and you have six on six. Okay. The key player actually is Charleston Collins. It's my first time watching this. Let's see. Um, what happens here? Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, this is on him. All right. If you are in a light box situation and you are the outside defensive end right here on this outside shoulder, you have got to set this edge defensively. Okay. So, you know, once again, this is a big boy uh, you're going up against. Let's see who this is. All right. Um, let me get a number here. Aaron Smith out of Conway, Arkansas. Okay. What are the Wampus Cats? Is it is that where is that what we're doing here? Still, all right. So year two player going up against year one player. Let's see what happens here. All right. First off, we get a late get off. Let's slow this down even more. It looks like a late get off. Let me slow this down. Uh, yeah. Okay. You can see he's late getting off the football. I'm a little bit more lenient on defensive ends because you're not on the ball like a defensive tackle is. Okay. Um, but this is late. Let's judge him against the other defensive end here. Yeah. You can see the other end has him beat slightly. Okay. And getting off the football. 
no problem. We could still get back and win this rep. All right. Second thing, just grabbing at air. Okay. Um, you know, the pad level here is not the worst. It's just when you're engaging, you don't want your arms to be this wide and you don't necessarily want to catch here. Okay. This is typical true freshman defensive line technique, just wild. Okay. So now he's got your insides, pause, uh, and he's got you engaged. There's no holding right here. The refs are going to let you grab in there. Okay. Now we're in trouble. We are just in a lot of trouble, but we're not completely out of the play. No matter what, we don't want to get caved in to the inside. This linebacker looks like he's a little late scraping over here, um, but that's not his responsibility, okay? Um, and now we're fighting up against it, okay? All you got to do in this situation is you just got to do whatever you can to turn. The one thing I see a lot of young players do is they do, once they feel themselves getting sealed to the inside, they just give up and go to the inside and just cut and try and make their way around. It's not what you want to do. Okay, so I do give Collins credit for still grinding. That's a good second level block right here by 74. Um, that's a good job right there trying to fight. All right, so we get actually uh, what looks to be another handoff here to the left side. It's a good job at Chris well adjusting to the high snap. Once again, Collins' pad level is not bad. I mean, this is actually really good stuff. I mean, once he gets everything, once again, it's a little bit of a late get off. That's okay. Man, that's that's good. Okay, once he gets his footwork and everything down, he, he might be something. Um, so it's a good run by Dominic Johnson uh, to cut it up here. And there you go. And I think, uh, let's see, we're going to get one more in. We're going to get one more in. I kind of want to do one more play. Huh? 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 I'm in the zone. I'm in my own zone. I'm in my, okay, yeah, that is it. Now, let's have an open discussion about this quarterback battle. Um. It it will not shock me if Malachi Singleton wins this battle outright. I'm talking about the QB1. Um, I, I do think it, it's going to take a lot for Taylor Green to not be your starter next season. But the most interesting guy here is Jacoby Criswell, right? I think a lot of Arkansans watching uh, this right now would love an Arkansan being the quarterback. Obviously, Jacoby out of... Um, uh, Moralton, that's Jacoby with an L, by the way. Um, and look, he, he went to North Carolina and got very unfortunate having to sit behind two NFL quarterbacks and Sam Howell and uh, Drake May. And I've, I've heard that uh, consistently. And KJ Jefferson will also be um, an NFL quarterback. But that doesn't mean he's good, right? Um, and and so it, look, it, it's tough being a Division One Power 5 quarterback, but it is a signal to me that Malachi Singleton is beginning the two reps over Jacoby. Um, but we'll see how all this plays out. Also, if I'm Arkansas, I want to be getting KJ Jackson some reps at quarterback during the scrimmage portion just to see what you have. Obviously, the lefty, uh, we did a film study on him not too long ago, but when I went back, and, and before I did this, I actually went and watched the high school tapes of Singleton and Chriswell, and uh, I, I just think Singleton's better. I, I, I do, but we'll see. You know, Jacoby, obviously, it's, it's got some talent, so we'll see what happens, um, but still, it, it should be the tail and green show. Also understand, you know, if I'm being critical of, of any player or highlighting any player, it's it, nothing is personal, right? I'm just giving you how I view uh the, the Razorbacks right and especially true freshman you know it, 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 especially with the, it only being the second practice of the year um there, there's no sweeping conclusions uh to be made so for the the crowd out there it says well why, why are you breaking down practice clips like I've said it's not the best angle um it's 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 just practice but I'm just giving you the observations uh, that I'm giving you, and you guys are giving me pretty good feedback overall. Now, uh, comment down below who you think uh, the QB1 should be. I, I am a little bit interested in seeing more of Robinson at left tackle, but I need to see him go up against someone else that's not 97 uh, to see if he's actually got some juice, right? You know, so much focus has been on Chambly, uh, the other Arkansas native tackle. I want to see if Robinson could, could really play uh, at the Division One Power 5 level. I, I find him to be very, very intriguing. Um, 
And then obviously defensively, we've not talked a whole lot about uh, the defensive side of the football. Th- this unit could be sneaky good, uh, but we'll, we'll see. Now, comment down below your thoughts on today's video, and we have to answer the trivia question here at the end. Um, this was uh, the clue right here, and that is a Cadillac Fleetwood and a Mac computer. So Fleetwood Mac, the legendary Stevie Nichols is Stevie Nichols. Stevie Nicks is the uh, the, the goat San Jose State alum. Uh, so shout out uh, Stevie Nicks. She was actually in Little Rock just a few days ago. So um, there you go. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Let me know what you guys want to see next. It is Power Hour SEC. Boom. And tonight we are doing oh, some hibachi. Let's go.